Someone has wisely said that you don't know how good your insurance is until you need to use it. Sadly, millions and millions of Americans today are rejecting that wisdom by enrolling into Medicare Advantage plans. They were attracted to the lower no premium. They were attracted to the marketing perks offered by that insurance company. But when those same people have some type of a serious illness, they will quickly realize that their Advantage plans have some serious disadvantages. I call those gotchas. In this video, I'm gonna share with you eight gotchas that most insurance companies and most Medicare agents do not want you to know. Now, the first one that I want to draw your attention to is what I call the network gotcha. The way that Advantage plans work is you, they're replacing original Medicare for you, and they do that by enrolling providers within uh, their uh, network uh, to be able to see the patients that enroll into those Advantage plans. And this is a way in which they can control the cost. And so they offer uh, people in most markets two different types of networks. There are HMO networks called health maintenance organizations, and there's also uh, networks that are called PPOs. Now these are not unfamiliar with those of us today, that we, these kind of networks have been around a while. But what's unique about these HMO versus PPO networks is uh, on the HMO contract, when someone enrolls into a Medicare Advantage plan that has an HMO network, uh, they typically do so because their co-payments are less, their uh, max out of pockets are less, and uh, they also have usually some additional benefits within that. Why? Because uh, those um, uh, insurance companies don't have to pay those providers providers as much services, and so they kind of pass on that to you. But the negative is you're going to have less providers to choose from. Why? Because those providers don't get paid as much. The hospitals don't get paid as much to take care of those patients, and uh, specialists don't get paid as much, and surgeons don't. And so there are just less doctors that are willing uh, to enroll in that HMO contract. Uh, the PPO pays more, and that's why you always see that usually the PPO has a much broader network. And so another issue when we compare these two is that the HMOs oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes require that um, uh, the patient uh, see their primary care doctor before they can see a specialist. In other words, they have to have the referral. Again, not all do that, but some do. Another issue will be out of network. If a person is on an HMO plan and they, for whatever reason, would like to go out of network, maybe get a second opinion, maybe because they have cancer would like to see a different oncologist that's not in their network, if they go out of the network, then uh, the insurance company won't pay anything. You'd be 100% liable for that. So that's what keeps you bound to that network. Now, there is one exception, what I just shared. If you're on an HMO plan and you find yourself in an urgent care situation or emergency room situation, then you can go out of your network and they will bill you as though you're right in the network. But other than those two instances, you have to stay uh, in the network. And that means you're going to have limited uh, providers. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to have plenty to choose from, but it's going to be limited uh, when someone has a serious health issue. You. They may have six or eight different doctors, and maybe four or five of those uh, take the plan, but it could be one or two that don't. Uh, usually if we have one or two doctors, not a big deal, but when we start having serious health issues now, we may have a problem with the network. Now with the PPO plan, again, no referrals required, and they do allow you to go on the network, but what happens if you go out of their network, now it's going to cost you more money. You may see a specialist for maybe $30 or $40, $50 copay, go out of network, it's going to be a 40% copay. Uh, you stay in your network, you're maxed out of pocket. It's normally three to four or five thousand for the year. Go out of network could be as much as ten thousand a year. And so the whole point is, it costs us more to do that. And what I'm trying to teach you is, this is something that though companies will talk about networks, they don't want to talk about the restrictions and the limitations and sometimes the difficulties that are posed by people when they're going to have to live within those networks. Now, if I were to compare that to staying in original Medicare A and B and getting a supplemental plan, folks, the screen uh, uh, options would be uh, as big as the screen. Why? Because there are no networks when you stay in original Medicare. You can go to any provider as long as they take Medicare. Any hospital, any surgeon, any specialist, uh, any doctor that takes Medicare, uh, that is your network. So you don't even have to ask them, do you take the plan? No, do you take original Medicare? And then they will take your supplemental plan. Again, that's a gotcha that you don't want to come back and bite you. Now, the second one is the pay-as-you-go gotcha. Now, oftentimes when you see the ads uh, that are on TV or the internet or even talked about by agents, is they want to focus on this. They want to focus on zero. And it is true that almost all the insurance companies that offer Advantage Plan have some zero plans. I think two out of three plans today have a zero plan. And they're going to have a couple things. You can usually see your primary care doctor for zero. You may be able to do some basic lab work for zero. So there's definitely going to be a few zeros. But people see the ads, and it's though so, uh, they're almost uh, believing that there's not going to be any out of pocket 
out-of-pocket cost on that Advantage plan. And that's certainly not, not the truth. The truth is there are a few zeros, but the majority of services that you're going to get and need on that Advantage plan are not going to be at zero. There's going to be a copay. If you go to the hospital, it's probably going to cost you $350 a day, uh, up to maybe five, six, seven days. And every time you're hospitalized, you're going to have to uh, pay those copays. If you have a CAT scan, an MRI, something like that, it's going to cost you $250 per scan. In other words, there's going to be an out-of-pocket cost. If you have an outpatient surgery, it could cost you anywhere from $300 to $400 for that outpatient surgery. See a specialist, somewhere between $30 to $50. But again, it's a pay-as-you-go system. So yes, there's a few zeros, but the majority of things are going to cost you something, and the insurance company will lay out a schedule of those copays. So again, it's almost implied where these are free plans, and they're not free plans. Uh, they simply pay-as-you-go. Now, again, as I compare that to uh, a supplemental plan, you always have a premium, but then you have very little out of pocket after that. And so what you have to decide is, would you rather pay a premium and not have to worry about paying as I go? Or would I have, would I have, have would I really have a zero premium plan and just pay as I go? All right, so either way, you're going to pay. And what we have found is that most people, if they have some kind of a serious illness in this system here, are going to pay more out of pocket than they would have on a supplemental plan. Let me just give you a quick example. Let's say I'm on a supplemental plan that costs me $125 a month times 12, that's $1,500 in the year. If I have a G plan, I had to pay a deductible of $240. So I spent $1,740 out of my pocket. Most HMOs today are gonna to be in the neighborhood of three to $5,000. Most PPOs somewhere between four to $7,000. So when people have a serious illness, that pay-as-you-go system is typically gonna cost them more than what their med sub premiums would be out of pocket. All right, that brings us into the third one, which is the MOOP gotcha. As we just talked about, we have the responsibility of copays for the majority of services that we, we get. We also, at times, have coinsurance. Uh, this had happened oftentimes with uh, diabetic supplies and different durable medical equipment type issues. We have coinsurance, which is 20% out of pocket. Some of the plans are also going to have a deductible, right, that you have to meet as well. It's usually a small deductible, but again, this pay-as-you-go system includes these out-of-pocket expenses until we hit what we call the MOOP, and that just simply stands for max out-of-pocket. And so again, this is something they often don't want to talk about. They want to focus on the zeros. But again, max out of pockets this year are going to be anywhere. And again, I'm just talking average. We're a nationwide company, so I'm just being kind of general here. But we're going to see the HMOs at about three to five thousand, and the PPOs anywhere from about four to seven thousand dollars go out of uh, go out of network more like ten thousand. But again, we have these out of pocket expenses, but they will stop somewhere. Meaning we apply all the uh, out of pocket expenses to the MOOP, and then if we ever reach this number for that year, uh, then we're done. You can put your checkbook away, put your purse away. You don't have to worry about it. But then these moves, max out of pockets, are going to reset every January. And then again, we're back to paying as we go until we hit the max. What can happen, I've had clients this happen to them. Uh, they would get diagnosed with something serious like cancer. Uh, and then they would uh, start their treatment, radiation, chemotherapy, maybe surgery. And they would quickly max out that year. Uh, and then uh, their treatment carries over to the next year. And then once again, uh, now they're paying as they go, and they will very quickly, usually within two or three months, and max out again. Had a lady not long ago, had a $6,700 max out of pocket on her Advantage plan, gets cancer towards the end of the year, maxes out. We roll in the next year, within a couple months, $6,700 again. So $13,400 uh, that was out of her pocket within less than a six-month window of time. And that's why I'm saying that truly is a gotcha, because those MOOPs will reset every January. Hey, if you found this video helpful, and if you want to see more Medicare information just like it, then go below, right below the video, and you can give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel. And every time I put a new video, which is about two every week, you'll be notified of that video and others just like you who need this vital information will get it as well. All right, that brings us into number four and I'm calling this the Perks Gotcha. We've all seen the ads on TV, especially during the open enrollment season, uh, where advantage plans are offered. Uh, they'll uh, recruit celebrities and athletes and different people to try to promote these uh, plans. And so there's a lot of emphasis on the perks. And the reason for that is because these perks are not available in original Medicare and with supplemental plans. All right, so when we look at the perks, the main thing is this. What you have to do is when you read about them, you have to find out what are the limitations on those perks. 
Yeah, they may offer a dental vision hearing a certain amount, but it's going to be an allowance. Typically, these are not plans. And so read about the limitations. How much dental benefit can you get? Do you have to go to a dentist that's within the network? When it comes to vision, uh, what are they going to give you? Typically $100, $150 a year. And so the point is find out the details. They just throw out these words, dental, vision, hearing, and those kind of things. But find out how it's going to work, how much money are they really going to uh, give you back on those kind of programs. And you also have to find out about networks. We see this a lot with the hearing aids especially. Uh, they'll give you some type of a hearing aid copay, but you have to go to certain network providers and maybe they'll offer you a, a hearing aid that you're happy with or not. Uh, but the point is, you just have to be paying attention to this. And one other one that's very, uh, uh, really noteworthy, and this video is what, what is called the Part B Give Back. And this is a perk you have to be very cautious about because what happens, a plan may say, we'll give you back a certain amount on your Part B premium. Right now, the Part B premium in 2024 is $174.90 a month for most people. Now, if you're high income, it would be more, but you may have a Part B give back in that Advantage plan. They'll say it's $100 a month. So what they're going to do is they're going to reduce your Part B premium down to $174.90. Okay? And you look on the surface saying, hey, that looks really good. I'm going to make another $100 in my Social Security check. But what you have to realize is these insurance companies are not being benevolent. What they're doing is they're taking benefits away from your plan and they're going to give you back this $100. In fact, I looked at a plan recently. They had several plans. Only one in this particular market that I looked at had a Part B give back. All their other plans did not. All their other plans had a copay for an outpatient procedure. I think it was right at $250. Okay, or $300, uh, and that's all it costs to have that outpatient procedure. But if you're on the Part B give back plan that gives you back $100 toward your Social Security, you had a 40% co-insurance uh, for that outpatient surgery, which would be thousands of dollars. And so the point is, did they really give you anything? No. If you needed a health care service, all the money they, they gave you back in your, your um, Social Security check has now would have gone then to that outpatient uh, facility. So what I find is that the co-pays are higher, the co-insurance is larger, uh, they they just simply are taking that hundred dollars and they're trying to induce you to to say hey we'll give you back this on your on your uh, social security check but it will cost you more for other health care services so be aware of that one so the point is these perks are legitimate and sometimes they're very attractive uh, but we have to look and see how can I use them what's the real benefit of this and what am I really giving up to take advantage of that perk and then number five what I call the pre-authorization gotcha and this is probably one of the uh, most disheartening things that happens with people when they get on an Advantage plan. When I say disheartening, I mean people get on the Advantage plan and they have to go through this pre-authorization process and they're very, very disappointed. So what this means is this is a person that needs some type of a health care service that is just beyond the average uh, uh, primary care visit or specialist visit or labs. This is someone that needs an MRI, maybe a CAT scan, PET scan, uh, someone that needs a knee replacement or a hip replacement. Uh, they need to go to a skilled nursing facility and uh, before they're going to get that service, it has to be pre-approved by the insurance company. And so what happens is this. Uh, if your doctor says you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement or MRI, CAT scan, those kind of things, and you're on a vantage plan, uh, the doctor's word is not going to be final. The doctor's office will have to submit pre-authorization paperwork to the Advantage company, uh, and that Advantage company is going to have to agree and approve before they're going to pay for it. And sometimes, just so you know, they do immediately approve those things, but sometimes they don't. They actually delay them and put those approvals off sometimes for four to six, eight weeks, and sometimes they just flat deny it. I've had people who were expecting and needed a knee replacement, and the insurance company said, no, we want you to go to therapy for nine months, or we want you to try... Uh, uh, shots uh, in the knee for a period of time. In other words, they have some something else they want you to do. And because you're under their plan, they have the final say so. It is not your doctor. It is absolutely the insurance company. Basically, in my opinion, I think they're practicing medicine whenever they override what the doctor is saying that you need. And so pre authorizations are just a reality with advantage plans. And again, not all the services are going to have to be pre approved, but they say right now about 70 to 72 percent of all the services that someone's needs on their advantage plan is going to have to be pre approved by the insurance company. So the insurance company really can't interfere or at least sometimes delay some of the care that you may need. Now, if you were to take original A and B and you had a supplemental plan, that supplemental plan will never require pre-authorization whatsoever. If Medicare says they'll pay for it, doctor says you need it, that supplemental plan can say nothing whatsoever. So we never deal with pre-authorizations with uh, supplemental plans as we do with 
Advantage plans. All right, that brings us to number six, which is the permanent gotcha. And what I mean by this is that some people don't realize that when they get on their Advantage plans, uh, they may never be able to get off of that. All right, and the reason for that is because once someone has been on the Advantage plan uh, for a year or two, three, four, five years, and they want to get off that plan, in order to get off the plan, they have to go to medical underwriting to be able to get a supplemental plan. Now, listen, I want to make this real clear. When we first go on Medicare, let's say that we go on Medicare uh, 1-1-2024. And that's our A, D, our A date and our B date, 1-1-2024. Um, what happens at this particular time, I can get a supplemental plan uh, uh, six months before I enroll in a Medicare B, and my, my supplemental plan will go effective on my B date, or I still have six more months where I'm in this uh, period of time called a Medigap open enrollment period. And so I can get any supplemental plan that I want. I can apply in advance, and that's, that window of time is still open for six months, which means what? January, February, March, April, May, June, which in my example means July 1 on, if I want to get a supplemental plan now I'm gonna to have to go through medical underwriting except in four states and that would be New York Connecticut Maine and Massachusetts uh, those have a continuous open enrollment but everywhere else uh, after six months of my B date not my A date uh, because sometimes people uh, take an A only and they work for two more years and they start their B so this could read 1 1 20, 26 on the B date then I would have six months of my B date to get any supplemental plan that I want okay and so no underwriting required at all insurance company has to take you and all your pre-existing conditions but let's say I have an A and B date and I take an advantage plan and let's say I decide to stay on that pl advantage plan for three years I like the perks I like the low premium and now we, we roll around I've been on the advantage plan and it's three years later it's 1 1 20, 27, and now I would like to get off the advantage and I want to make a switch to a supplemental plan now what happens? Now I have to go through medical underwriting. Now to make that switch, uh, we're gonna have to ask you uh, 30 health questions. We're gonna check all your meds you're taking now and that you have taken for the last two years. Maybe get a statement from your doctor, maybe explaining some of your health issues. But to make this switch, now I've got to uh, be uh, medically approved. That insurance company, I'm well beyond the six months of my B date. Now they don't have to take me. So that, that uh, insurance company can say no. They actually can deny my application if they're concerned about any of my health conditions, concerned about any of my pre-existing conditions. And by the way, to make this switch, you do not have to be ready to run a marathon, okay? You don't. But I can tell you, you will not make that switch if you have AFib. You will not make that switch if you have spinal stenosis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, osteoporosis typically, a diabetic that takes too much insulin, or a diabetic that has any, any kind of retinopathy or neuropathy problems, cancer in the last 36 months. So on and on the list goes. And a lot of those things are not life and death issues, but they're serious enough well, that, that supplemental plan does not have to take you. And that's why I'm saying this is really a gotcha that is permanent because if your health has changed and you've been on that advantage plan, again, for any length of time, year two or more, you are going to have to medically qualify to get off of that. Again, except in New York, Connecticut, Maine, and Massachusetts, all the other 46 states and the District of Columbia require that you have to go through underwriting. Those insurance companies do not have to take you. You will be permanently on that advantage plan for the rest of your life. Hey, if you come to a place where you know you're gonna have to make some Medicare decisions pretty soon, the best way to do that is to click up here in this right-hand corner and you'll have an opportunity to book a call with one of our Medicare guides. All the guides around here, I have personally trained and they truly are professional. They'll answer your questions and they'll show you different Medicare options to make sure that you're confident in the decision that you make. All right, that brings us to number seven and that is the customer service gotcha. Here's what happens with the majority of Advantage plans today. When you call the 800 number that's on your insurance card, you're almost always gonna be transferred to an international call center. Now, I can't say 100% of the time, but I can tell you it will be the greatest majority of the time you're going to an international call center. Could be in India, could be in Philippines, could be in China, but somewhere outside of America. And again, this is the way these insurance companies make billions of dollars by really uh, farming out their customer service that, in my opinion, should be based right here in America, where people People that you can understand their language, you really understand Medicare. And again, I don't fault those people who work in those call centers. Those people are just trying to provide for those families in those other countries. But I fault these insurance companies who have billions of dollars and make billions of dollars. And when you have a customer service issue, you're going to be transferred somewhere where you may or may not be able to understand them. And secondly, I always wondered, do they really even understand Medicare? So that's what I'm saying. That's a customer service gotcha, because you will typically have to go somewhere else to get help. All right, that brings us to the final gotcha, 
And that is what I'm referring to as the agent gotcha. And this is probably one of the most uh, unfortunate aspects of Advantage plans uh, because Advantage plans actually pay us as agents a higher commission and a longer commission uh, than what uh, supplemental plans pay. Uh, and so agents that are really just chasing commissions, uh, also all they want to talk about is Advantage plan. And again, I want you to know as I wrap this up is that I don't think it's wrong to get an Advantage plan. I don't think it's uh, you know some kind of crazy decision. In fact, sometimes it really is uh, someone's best decision based upon their circumstances and their situation. However, what happens is many agents don't want to talk about both options. And I feel like we owe it ethically to you to talk about both systems, both options, because as you've seen, they're totally different. Remember, these two systems have one thing in common. You have to be enrolled in A and B to have a supplemental plan. You've got to be enrolled in A and B to have an advantage plan. But beyond that, they're totally different. And so I believe that you have the right to know that if you take that advantage plan, what are the implications of that HMO versus that PPO network versus uh, almost an unlimited network if you stay in original Medicare. Why? Because if you have a serious illness, it's going to matter to you what providers you can go to. You have to know that Advantage plans, yes, have a low premium, some perks, but you're still going to pay out of pocket. And if you have a serious illness, you could easily max out during the year and possibly even the next year. So either system we're going to pay. And then thirdly, I think it's important for you to know about those pre-authorizations that we just discussed. Why? Because that's a reality. And it doesn't mean everything you're going to have to go through uh, is going to have to be pre-approved, but many things are. And that can be very frustrating and disappointing when the insurance company makes that final decision and not you. And then the permanency. Folks, listen, it could be that you get on that Advantage plan and you're healthy and then you're going to roll the dice for three years or five years, but you have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And if your health changes, now you're permanently on that plan. And here's my point. An agent that only wants to talk about Advantage plans and what they offer and not about some of the fine print, some of the dark side, is not doing you a service. Yes, they are making a higher commission. And yes, a longer commission, truly lifetime residuals on those, but they have not done you a good service. Because why? Now that you're sick, if that happens to you now, you're going to have to live with the consequence of that choice. And my view is this, and by the way, I'll be 63 here in just a month. I believe it's this. It's not a matter of um, if it's going to happen to us. We are all going to have health problems. Usually it's a matter of when. And that's when you're going to know whether or not you're happy with your insurance choice. So my point is this. You have a right to know the details of both of these systems. Why? Because you're going to have to live with that choice.